with the RC hobby, sooner or later, you're going to have to do some soldering. What soldering is, is basically the joining of two wires together with some molten solder. Let's take a look at how to properly solder two wires together. Before we get started though, let's cover some safety material. Always wear eye goggles for some eye protection. Uh, this will protect your eyes from any solder that may splash or any flux that will splash. Gloves. Gloves will protect your hand from getting burnt. Simple as that. Always solder in a well-ventilated area. The flux from the solder is quite toxic, so try not to breathe in the fumes when working with it. And also, the soldering iron gets very hot, so keep it away from anything that is flammable and try not to burn yourself in the process. Okay, so now let's cover the tools that we'll need for this. Obviously to solder, you're gonna need a soldering iron. Um, pick the iron that is rated for the job you're doing. So say I'm so soldering a smaller gauge wire or a thinner wire, you're gonna need, you don't need an iron with a lot of heat. But if you're soldering a thicker wire, you will need an iron that can handle that gauge. So pick the appropriate iron for your use. Next, because we're working with wires, a nice pair of wire cutters or a sharp knife will work. What we'll be using them for is cutting the wires and then removing the insulation. Okay, so what you see here is a spool of solder. This is some 6040 lead tin solder with the rosin core. There are other types out there on the market, so choose whatever you like. Because this is this solder does contain lead, just be sure to wash your hands afterwards. Okay, so on the pad of paper here, you see I have some vice pliers. Um, you can use these, or if you have a tabletop vice, that'll work. Or if you have um, some other means to hold a wire steady while you're doing the soldering. This is because while you're soldering, one of your hands is gonna be holding the iron, the other is gonna be holding the wire. So you're gonna need something to hold that third piece steady. Okay, and also you notice that I'm soldering on a uh, piece of cardboard here. Um, the purpose of the cardboard is just to protect the tabletop surface here from any molten solder that may splash onto it. All right, let's get started. So as you can see, I've already used the uh, wire strippers to strip off some insulation on the end of these two wires. With the insulation stripped off, I also then twist the loose strands together. This will make it tighter and easier for us to work with. Now, the process of soldering is going to involve us applying solder to each wire independently and then bringing the two wires together and applying heat to both of them to do the final join. The process of applying solder to the individual wires independently is called tinning. So let's go ahead and tin this black wire. 
I'm just going to apply some solder to the iron to help in the aid the heat transfer. To thin the wire, I'm just going to apply the iron tip to the bottom side of the wire while holding the solder on the top side. This way, the wire has a chance to be thoroughly heated before melting the solder. And then we'll know that we'll get good contact. With the wire not heated completely, some solder may melt, but we could end up with a cold joint. OK, so I'm just applying some solder again to the tip to aid in heat transfer. Apply the solder, or put the solder against the wire on top, and then apply the iron beneath. You do not need to apply a lot of solder to the wire. Just enough to coat the surfaces with some solder is all you need. OK. So with the first wire tin, let's move to the second wire here. I'm just tucking the wire underneath the vise here to weigh it down so that I have better access to it. Again, lay the solder against the wire and then apply some heat underneath. And then let the iron melt the solder that's on top of the wire. When tinning or soldering in general, you want to minimize the amount of time that the iron is on your wire or your surface. Because if the iron is very hot, the longer you hold the iron onto the wires, the more heat gets transferred, and which can in turn melt extra insulation or damage some PCB components. OK, so with the two wires soldered or tinned, let's go ahead and solder them together. What you'll want to do before soldering the two wires together is inspect the tinning job that you did. So actually look at. the wire ends where the solder is and ensure that the solder is a uh, silvery, shiny complexion. If you see that it's dull or gray, that means that it's, it's a cold joint. The solder didn't adhere correctly to the wire, so you should um, retin. With cold joints, what could happen over time with vibration or um, just over time in general, the wires will actually separate from the solder. And then with a cold joint, you'll have a loose connection or intermittent connection. All right, so soldering the two wires together is the same process as tinning. Except now, instead of holding the solder with one hand and the iron in the other, I'm going to hold the other tin wire in one hand and the iron in the other hand. OK, so let me just adjust this a little bit. OK, so same technique. I'm not going to apply any additional solder, but I'm just going to hold the two wires against each other and then apply some heat on the bottom wire. Once you see the solder, solder start flowing between the two wires, hold it there for an additional three, four seconds to allow the solder time to harden. 
once the solder is hardened, you can release. Again, you don't want the iron against the wires for too long. Two to three seconds should be sufficient. If you're finding that you have to hold the iron against your surface for longer than that, um, I would suggest going to a more powerful solder or one that can, a more powerful iron or one that can reach a higher temperature.